every mind. You crazy for this? Soulful. It's like our responsibility to make us feel something. You know, to make people feel. Make people feel what we feeling. Hey yo. Reggie here, and I want to welcome you to another one of my live streams. This is Comics Today, a show that we do on Wednesday because it is the best day of the week, that being a new comic book day. And as part of this show, I go to the chat and I ask you guys to shout out the books that you all may have picked up earlier today at your LCS. And as part of that, I want you to let us know what you picked up. If you read something that's really awesome that we should put on the top of our reading stacks, I want you to let us know that. If you want to shout out your LCS, get after it. If you picked up a book that is not a new book, but a new to you book, let us know that so we can celebrate with you. I do. I will tell you, I have one of a couple of each. I have a new to me book and a couple of new books here on the desk that I will show you all momentarily. Uh, always as part of this show, we have a guest or two on to help me to make sense of something that is happening in the world of comics and collectibles. And unfortunately, one of our guests was unable to make it. So we're going to uh, try to fill the time. We're going to fill the time. By giving away some stuff, we're going to give away some stuff, we're going to tap dance, and we are going to get through this show, and we are going to have a good time. I will tell you that above all else, I believe in having a good time, no matter what happens. So if you're watching this live, you have an opportunity to get some cool things. My friends over at Skybound sent me a bunch of books, and uh, we are going to give some of these books away uh, if you're able to to answer some very, very difficult trivia that I just made up a few minutes before going live. <laughs> if you watch the videos and if you pay attention and have eyes, you should be able to answer this trivia. Let's put it that way. Uh, but let's go to the uh, the chat here momentarily and see what it is that you all may have picked up. So if you hit your LCS up today, uh, let me know what it is that you may have picked up. If you read some stuff, let me know. Uh, Doug, Doug's on the board early. Doug is like skybound rocks. Yes, indeed, they do. Huge shout out. To all of my blue wrenches up in here, I definitely appreciate all the support that you guys give. Uh, Shazam Family Matters, uh, Superman number one. There you go. Action figure. I just I just finished watching a, uh, a reading and watching a little clip from Zachary Levi, who plays Shazam. And I have uh, some thoughts on something that uh, we will probably get to here in a moment. Doug says, I snagged a couple of very hard to find low print Sandman Comics, congrats to you. Did you get those online or did you venture to a shop in New Jersey and pick those up? Uh, scrolling through, uh, what is that? Seeing what else you guys are talking about. Bought my first slab, Batman 6, for 40% off. Says it was a no-brainer. There are deals out there to be had. If you missed my video earlier this week, you saw... Uh, well, you didn't see because if you missed the video, you didn't see it. Uh, but in a video this week, I released, uh, I, I showed a Silver Age book that I managed to snag, I think, for a fair price versus where that book has been historically. It was not 40% off, Scarecrow, but it was an attractive price. But congrats to you, brother. Steve is up in here. How you doing, brother? He says, only seven books from Comic Book Addiction, Venom, Spider Gwen, uh, Radiant Black, uh, Sergeant Rock, and Punchline, and a few other books. That's what's up. Thank you, brother, for shouting that out. Got a stack, a stack of books, but Star Girl was the read, says Trev. Is that a new Star Girl? New Star Girl? Uh, just confirm that for me, brother. Scrolling through the Blue Wrench, the OG is in the house, giving a shout out to Scarecrow for that book that he picked up, his very first slap. Scarecrow, I'm going to go out on a limb, brother. I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna go out on two limbs. Uh, you will not find a lot of books forty percent off. I'm gonna just go ahead and say that to you right now. Uh, but I also have a feeling that potentially this book will not be your last slab. So good luck, and um, uh, sorry for you. <laughs> Scrolling through Marvel superheroes. Issue number eight, Raphael, I guess you picked that up. Congrats to you. Was that graded or raw? Does not matter. It is a score. Seth, how you doing, brother? It's good to see you. 
uh chewy uh what is that wasn't able to make the lcs today but recently picked up ghost rider six through nine tomb of dracula one and a marvel spotlight book that's what's up uh congrats to you brother mark how you doing brother he picked up two alex ross timeless villain books plus a few other 23 those timeless that's i'm gonna I'm be honest I, I don't make it to an LCS anymore. And that's one of the things that I miss is going to an LCS, of course, talking to the folks in the LCS, but just seeing what books are out there. I haven't seen one of these timeless books in person, the villain variants that is. I've spoken about them, but I haven't seen them. And that's, again, one of the things that I miss out on by not going is uh, I don't get to see this cool stuff. So, well, Boar, how you doing, brother? It is good to see you. I uh, picked up a couple of things, including Riddler Year One. That's that's what's up. Um, scrolling through the, <laughs> I finally went to the LCS since Thanksgiving. Um, fantastic. Your, your LCS, I'm confident has missed you. I am confident of that. Uh, wife surprised me by paying for it as a valent. Oh, that's fantastic. That is fantastic. Happy husband. No, that is not a saying. Uh, that is not a saying. But congrats to you, brother. That's what's up. Hawaiian punch in your face. How you doing, brother? He says, finally got my grill. No one knew about X-Men 1 first. Professor X, congrats, brother. Congrats. Uh, Magneto, Iceman, Jean Grey, that's what's up. Uh, it is good to see your name in the chat, brother. Uh, no doubt about that. Scrolling through, a bunch of people shouting out some stuff they picked up. Oh, Doug got it on the fee bay. Oof. Ooh, we got it on the Feebay. Somebody sent me a message the other day and they were talking about Feebay. And I was like, so you still buy comics only on eBay? <laughs> There, there's so many great platforms out there uh, that you, you have to shop around. You have to see what's out there. And I think, Doug, you probably did that and decided that that the fee bay was the right way to go for these books. It makes perfect sense. But I know a lot of people, they don't buy books unless they're on eBay. And I'm like, hey. There's a lot of great platforms out there. You got to look around, see what's out there. I will tell you, I have, I found a book. There's a book that I want to buy and it is both on, uh, the short box app and it is on, um, what is the other one? It, it's on another app as well. And the price is different. And rest assured, I'm going to be buying it from the cheaper place, which I do believe is short box. But uh, just interesting stuff where if if you pay attention, you can see the exact same book in multiple places. Uh, sometimes they will change the image slightly. But if you pay attention to the book and, and or the serial number, you can actually see that it's the exact same book. So shout out to everybody that's up in here right now. Uh, again, if you made it to your LCS, you are a hero. Picked up a couple of books. This one came in from uh, mycomicshop.com. This is Amazing Spider-Man issue number 20. I have gone back and re I've gone back and read a bunch of these issues that I missed. Um, I'm not enjoying it. I'll be honest with you. The whole demonic uh, Spider-Man stuff and the dark web stuff, eh, eh, not, not enjoying it. Uh, I'm really not enjoying it. So we'll see what happens in issue 20, but the previous issues, not so much, not so much. Uh, here is uh, Thor issue number 31. Uh, I've just ended this on my pull. I've been pulling this for since issue one. So I'm basically done with this now. I, I went back and read uh, a bunch of the Miles Morales books that I also had. The new Miles Morales series that came out. Uh, Ziggler, I think Cody Ziggler. It's actually not bad. If you guys are not reading Miles Morales, I definitely encourage you guys to check it out because I I am enjoying some Miles Morales over what I'm getting right now from Amazing Spider-Man, which is the flagship publication. So uh, my 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 new to me book, my new to me book is right here. Uh, there you go. Marvel Superheroes Secret Wars issue number two. And uh, somebody called me out recently in the video because I, I had Avenger Secret Wars on my mind, the movie, and showed the book and said it. And most people are like, eh, Reggie just had a brain fart. Somebody wanted to call me out for it, but it is what it is. So I have, I have to make sure that I read the title. Uh, but this is issue number two. If you missed the video from earlier this week, I will tell you uh, that that's a little, that book is a little out of context. But when you watch the video tomorrow, everything will come together. So definitely stay tuned for that. Let me go uh, to the chat real quick. Uh, Brendan says, Dark Web was horrible. <laughs> 
Ah, oh, Dark Web was horrible and ASM has been rough. Uh, but the recent five part Deadly Neighborhood Spider Man was fantastic. I have not read that, so I may have to look at that. But again, brother, I I'm gonna be honest, and, and I always am. Uh, Amazing Spider Man has not been good for a very long time. Nick Spencer's run was absolute trash. It was absolute trash. This current run is not very good. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of uh, JRJR's artwork. Um, and so I'm just, I'm on the struggle bus. I really am on the struggle bus with ASM. I keep buying it because I'm a Spider Man guy, uh, but I, I'm definitely, I'm def definitely not enjoying it. So, uh, what is that? Drifter had to pick up the new Ghost Rider. That's what's up. Congrats to you, brother. Scrolling through. Uh, <laughs> Oh my goodness. I think I see a run of 9.8 come. Man, I'm not gonna tell you a I'm not gonna tell you a thing, but what I will say is stay tuned for the video. That that is what I will say to you. Uh the the best, the best Spider-Man that I've seen race recently is Jack Black. If you have not seen the reel that I released uh earlier today, treat yourself to some Jack Black, okay? The man is hilarious. He is hilarious, no doubt about it. Uh, I'm scrolling through, checking out. My man, Harvey Abel, how you doing, brother? It is good to see you. It is good to see you, Harvey Abel, Mr. A, one of my Canadian brothers. It is good to see you up in here, brother. Uh, all right, let me click off that. Um, what do I want to do? Let, let's give away something real quick. So this is for U.S. only because I'm cheap, right? Uh, you know, the economy is not in a good place, right? U.S. only. Uh, we're going to do a giveaway. Um, first person that can give me the correct answer is going to be the winner. Lag is a real thing, but I'm going to do it based upon what I see first. If you are indeed the winner, send me an email to Reggie at ReggieCollects.com. Do not, do not send it to Gmail. Do not uh, instant message me on Instagram. I need an email with your name, screen name, and mailing address. And I'm going to put together a bundle of things for you. Reggie at ReggieCollects.com. All right. The, the trivia question, the very first trivia question today is what is the theme of my wall? What is the theme of my wall? The first person that can give me the correct answer to that question will be the recipient of some really awesome books from my friends at Skybound. I have some Invincible uh, Undeluxe. You can't see that very well because the light. There you go. That's much better. All right. Some uh, some more Invincible, some Creep Show. They sent me a bunch of Walking Dead, which is really awesome. A lot of great covers from Walking Dead. This one is uh uh, creepy. It's creepy. Valentine's Day, I guess, uh, jam, uh, some creep show right here. They sent me a couple of creep shows. And then this one's really awesome. That is a really awesome creep show cover right there, but I have some other ones that are off to the side. So again, I will put together a nice little bundle and send out to one person that is able to give me the correct, uh, theme to the wall behind me. Let me see. Let me see. I'm scrolling. I am scrolling. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, Canadians. I, I, you know, I have to draw the line somewhere and it is right at the Canadian border. <laughs> Let me see. Jack Black as Superman was awesome. No doubt about it. Oh man. Yeah, brother. Don't, 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 oof, don't even get me started. Don't even get me started. Uh, I'm scrolling through some of the comments here, trying to see not since one more day says Izzy, uh, scrolling through scrolling through uh blame canada i saw that one already all the canadians flooded <laughs> i love canada i love canada man i do thank you tina canadians are awesome and here's the thing tina it's always a test people say they sent me an email i never received it i said did you spell my name correct just one g um that is that is one of the tests uh scrolling through Ooh, doug doug technically has it correct but uh, Doug, do you want to be the winner? Because if you want to be the winner, Doug, I will honor it. You are indeed correct. The Brat the Bratton brothers, are you two together? Because these comments came in literally, literally back to back, followed by my man Seth. Followed by my man Seth. Tell you what, 
all three of you send me an email to Reggie at ReggieCollects.com. I'm going to put together something for both Bratton Brothers and my man, Seth. I see all three of those in a row. Fantastic! You were oh so close. You were oh so close, my brother. Uh, but the Bratton Brothers and Seth beat you out. Sorry about that. But I will bundle up some cool stuff and uh, send out to the three of you. I was only planning to give something away to one person for this first trivia question. Uh, but it is what it is. We are, we are freestyling tonight. All right. So a lot of people ask me about cons. I have a lot of people that will send me messages asking me about cons. Am I coming to this con? Am I coming to that con? And my answer to a lot of these people is generally the same. I don't go to cons. That is generally my answer. My secondary answer is I have to have a reason for going to the con. I don't uh, just go to cons because uh, somebody's throwing a con. It's just not my jam. But there is a con. There is a con that I've gone to a few times over the years that I've absolutely enjoyed. I've absolutely enjoyed. I've gone there and bought things. I've gone there and not bought things and had an equally good time, regardless of what happens because of the community of people that are there. But I heard that this con uh, has a show coming up and I wanted to invite the organizer behind this show on to talk with me a little bit about this con and what makes it special. And so I want to welcome to the show right now, Tim. Tim, how are you, sir? I'm great. How are you, Reggie? I am doing well. Tim, I don't think I've ever seen you not sitting at the door at the Berkeley Comic Show. I, I don't think I I've do. ever seen you stand up, walk <laughs> around, or do anything other than sit. But Tim, it is good to see you, brother. Good to see you. Thanks so, for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. So you have a show coming up, the Berkeley yes, Comic Show, on March 5th this Sunday. from 11 to 5. Yes? yes. Yep. That's Can exactly you it. tell me what makes the Berkeley comic show so special? Yeah, I can tell you. It's just all about comic books, man. It's that's the key. It's um, it, it started actually. We've been doing this show probably about seven years now. I think this year will be seven years. We try to do five a year. Um, we missed one during COVID, but other than that, I think we've done at least five and sometimes six shows a year at the Berkeley Adult School there in downtown Berkeley, California. And it started when Mark, uh, my partner in the show, he runs houseofcomics.com. Uh, that's my buddy. We've been friends for years and years, way before we did the show, but we were both set up at a, at a con, at a comics convention. And I think we were two of like four tables. And this was a big show. This was like hundreds and hundreds of tables. And there were just no comic books there. Yep. And we were talking to each other and we're like, man, what happened to comic book shows? There used to be comic books at comic book shows. Yep. And now there's Funko Pops and cosplay and everything else. Um, so we just decided kind of right then and there that we were going to start our own show. And it was going to be all about comics. That's what's and up. And so that's what we do. And that's, um, I think, why our show is special and why it continues to attract a lot of people to it. Uh, they know they're not going to have bootleg DVDs and Funko Pops and, you know, um, insurance salesmen and stuff like that at the booth. And because what happens is nothing against those folks who run those shows. If you have a giant room like that, you got to fill it up. Yeah. You know, yep. so they're having to sell tables to anybody who wants a table. And that means a bunch of junk that's not comics. Yep. Um, so it's either that or the big shows. It's all cosplay and um, actors and things like that. And the focus is removed from comic books. So our whole goal is just to do a comic book show that has a lot of comic books. And that's it. Yep. No clothes, no DVDs, no posters, no nothing like that. Just comics. And so that's our that's our difference. And and just to be clear, there, there's nothing wrong with Funko Pops and sure. I mean there's something wrong with bootleg DVDs, right? That like that's <laughs> illegal. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with that stuff. But if you're yeah. a comic person and you're going to a con, comic con, you want to see comics. I've gone to these big cons, brother, and I've been able to hit all the 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 shops, the booths in like ten minutes because yeah. there's only like ten of them, if that. Right. Yep, you exactly. go to the Berkeley comic show and no matter where you go, 
there's nothing but comics in there. It's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's what we wanted. We wanted a place for comic book lovers to show up and buy comics and talk to their friends who are in the comic book hobby as well. Um, I think that's another big um, benefit for us is it's like kind of a club at this point, you know, because a lot of the same people come, we all love comic books. It's like a party for comic book lovers in there. Um, And it's just a good time. You get to see people you haven't seen in a long time. It's great. But what's interesting, you say that it's like a club and and maybe even like a a little like a family, but it's not cliquish. Like you don't have that feeling that people are um, not friendly. Like I've come to the con and I've just stood there and talked to people like Ben and Chris for like an hour. Just yeah. Just talking, right? That's I, the fun. I met I met Frog Boy there, who has done some great yeah. stuff for me. I've met yeah, he's um, awesome. the short box guys at Berkeley Comic yeah. Show. I know Chris, yeah. I know Ben, I know the Bunky brothers. Like I know a lot of people simply by coming to the show and walking around. Exactly. And it's great. Exactly. And that's a great point that you make that everybody's friendly. It's not a it's not a show off situation. It's it's just people who love comics talking about comics, yep. talking about their favorite series, yep. talking about what books are trying to find that day, helping each other out to find books. I see that all the time. Yep. And I see lots of people coming out because, like you say, I'm at the door every every time. So I ask people on their way out to show me the stack. And I mean, there's. You know, everybody's got a stack on the way out. Yep. Um, because so. there's also good books there. I mean, you there's good books. I've I've seen Hulk ones. I've seen Giant Size X Men, X Men One, FF One, oh, yeah. Amazing Fan. Like good books. It's not trash. But you For also sure. they they also seem to have like a range of books. Like there's the the dollar books, the five dollar books that they kind of spread out on the table near the door. Yep. But then you have your high end books there as well. It it's a nice selection like if you want to dig you can dig if you want a good key you can find that there and i think that that's also what makes the berkeley comic show great thank you man i appreciate that we do we make a huge effort to make that true um by rotating the vendors um you're always going to have new vendors every single show there's it's never going to be the same slate of vendors we like to include uh, people with collections. That's one of our favorite things to do is because I sit at the front door, a lot of people come up and say, Hey, I found this collection or I have my childhood collection. What should I do with it? Mm. We'll set up a table at the show. You know, there you go. Um, of course I got to find out what it is first. If it's a bunch of 90s stuff, maybe not, but be, a lot of times they have, be careful. Yeah, dark, no, dark I, like is dope. I like some 90s. I like some 90s. Um, but Yeah, so we get a good mix of like collectors selling their collection Mm -hmm. or, you know, like you said, the top dealers, Bunky Brothers, A1, those guys, those are the top dealers. They have all the keys. Yep. Um, Champion, Heroes, those guys are big supporters of the show. Yep. And they're always going to have the Hulk one, the FF one, the, you know, the keys. But like you said, we try to get the people in there who are just blowing their collection out or... They bought a store inventory and they need to move it fast. And you'll see those booths are just swarmed, you know, at, yep. at the beginning of the show because everybody wants to check out what they have. It's a lot of it's a lot of fun. So so to the point of this list here, um, what I noticed about this list is one that I've been to a lot of these shops. Like I've I've been to a healthy number of the ones that are listed here. Yeah. But as you go down this list, it is an assorted list. It is there's there's comic shops. There's an app, right? The short box guys. Yeah. But then there's like individual people's names. Yeah, like, exactly. Talk, talk. It, are those just individual people that have a collection that's trying to sell it? Like talk a little bit about this eclectic mix of dealers. Yeah. So some of those individual names are dealers, um, but some of them are like the people I've, I was mentioning about, you know, just somebody who came in at the last show. Hmm. And said, hey, I got my childhood collection. I, I want to get rid of it. What should I do? And we work them in there and they'll have a table in there. So I think that's a big key um, to to the success of the show is that the customers who come know that it's going to be different every time. They're not going to see the same stuff. And even the dealers that come 
um, multiple times are going to know they need to bring the fresh material to the show. Um, so it's always new stuff. Um, there's a huge variety, as you mentioned, between the low end and the high end. So you can come in with 10 bucks and spend two hours searching through dollar boxes, 50 cent boxes and find some killer deals. Yeah. Or you can spend a hundred grand if you want to. So it's, it's really, there's something for everybody. There's something in the dollar boxes or the best keys you can find in the market. You know, there so you go. we so, love offering so for those that. folks, for those folks that yeah, are coming ahead. in late, I'm talking to Tim, uh, that is the guy behind the Berkeley comic show. He and his buddy Mark run this thing and have been doing so for the last seven years. It is honestly one of the best comic cons that I've been to because it's all about comics. Like it's just wall to wall dealers. And so I've never really spoken to Tim in great detail because he's always working the door. I, I walk yeah. by him, I say my hello, I pay my money yeah. and I go do what I have to do. Um, but but Tim, one of the things that I wanted to ask you about, brother, is over these last seven years, what are you seeing in terms of market dynamics, right? Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, unemployment is, is relatively low, no doubt about that. But we do know a lot of what drives the engine of California is tech jobs. And there have been a lot of tech jobs that have mm -hmm. been lost. There's been a lot of people that have chosen to leave California for various reasons, myself included. Um, yeah. are, are you seeing anything different in the comic book market this year? versus maybe last year or the year before talk a little bit about that yeah i think we're definitely seeing some some changes um obviously the pricing that spike was just insane and yeah, there's, there, there's no there's no going back to the tip of that spike i don't think at least not anytime soon but i think our show offers something at every price point so as far as seeing dramatic differences for the show, I haven't really, mm -hmm. um, because we've had a lot of value conscious attendees anyway that come just to dive the dollar boxes all day. I mean, the same guys come with a backpack and they're they're down there all day and they fill that thing up and maybe go out to the car and drop it off and come back for another pile. Yep. So those people, that that hasn't changed at all. I think there is probably some price resistance at the high end keys, you know, because you it's it's the whole catching a falling knife thing. Yeah. You want to try to get it now. And I, I agree with some of your videos where it looks like time to come back in on some of this stuff personally. Yeah. Um, but who knows? I mean, it could keep going down a little bit. But as far as the mid level, the mid tier and the and the lower tier stuff. I haven't seen that stuff affected at all. We have a lot of people who come in with a list, you know, and they want to fill their runs. Yeah. They're looking for good value on five, ten dollar books and less. Those people haven't changed their buying activities, I don't think at all. Yep. I think if anything, there's more deals uh, everywhere. There you go. So if you if you know what you love and you've been looking for it, and it's cheaper, you know, sometimes half of what it was a year ago. I think it's probably a good time to pick it up. There you um, go. But, you, you know, who can predict the future? Yeah. Um, but the market is definitely changing. As far as the show, we just had our top um, performing attendance at the last show. So everybody's still coming. Everybody still loves their comic books. Um, and I think there's, you know, they can find some good values at our show, which is why they keep coming to the show. That last point that you hit is probably the best thing that you've said, right? And you've said a lot of good stuff, yeah. but the idea that there hasn't been this massive fall off or exodus of people from the hobby yeah. makes me feel very good, right? The fact that yeah. you've been doing this seven years, we post pandemic, uh, post boom, if you will, and, and more people are coming to cons, at least yeah. your con, that is a wonderful thing. It really is. You know, I agree. so, so, I agree. so Tim, uh, Tim again is the guy that is behind, uh, the Berkeley comic show. They have a show coming up, uh, March 5th from what was it? 11 to five o'clock. Right. And he has a great lineup of, uh, of exhibitors and dealers that are going to be there. I know a lot of these folks personally, if you happen to be anywhere in, uh, Northern California, check this show out. Uh, if I was still Thanks. local brother, I would be there. Let me just Thanks, tell man. you that. I appreciate uh, it. 
Tim, as I let you go here, brother, where can people uh, get a hold of you on the social media to check out more details of the show? Yeah, on Instagram, it's at Berkeley Comic Show, all one word. And I run the Instagram, and then Mark runs the Facebook, and that's also Berkeley Comic Show on Facebook. Um, the website is berkeleycomicshow.com. And I I think that's all of our socials. Oh, you could check out houseofcomics.com as well. That's Mark's site where he sells comics. I don't sell comics at the show. I'm just doing it because I love comic books and I love the community. Um, I also want to thank you for being an early supporter. I remember you coming by at the at the old senior center where we were in that tiny hot it room. Like, it was like this big. Yeah. That was a <laughs> tiny room and it got hot and sweaty in there, but oh. I still loved it with the wood oh. paneling. Man, that's my jam right there. But so, yeah, I'm happy we're in a bigger spot now. That that was the first one I had gone, come to, brother. I had yeah. been out of comics for a long time and I, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to this con. Oh, I cool. got there and it was it was tiny and it was and I was a lot bigger then. So it was <laughs> it was tough. It was tough. Yeah. But I had a good time. I stuck with it, man. And, and Tim, I wish you and the show and Mark nothing but success again. Thank you. The Berkeley Comic Show is fantastic. It really Thanks, is. Thanks, Reggie. I All appreciate right. it. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, everybody. My pleasure, brother. Yeah. Take care. Bye. All right. So that was Tim. Again, uh, I don't blow smoke about this con. I thoroughly enjoy it. He, he does like some raffle stuff uh, throughout the show to give back to people. Sometimes there's an artist or two on the stage. Uh, there was an actor or two on the stage. Like that, that part of the show is really, really small. The bulk of the show is nothing but comics. And he made a comment there about the guys that go digging in the dollar bins and the $5 bins for the entire show. I know a lot of those guys. Those are the guys that will not tell you their secrets of where they pick up books at flea markets. Uh, I know a lot of those guys uh, that would never give me their secrets when I lived there in Northern California. But again, the Berkeley Comic Show, fantastic show. I encourage you guys to check it out. Uh, we do have another guest that is going to be on momentarily. But before I get to that, I want to give you guys a quick reminder, give you a quick reminder of uh, one of the sponsors of the channel. It is this right here, comicspriceguide.com. They have more than 1 million comics in the database. You have the ability through this website to be able to look up both raw and graded comic values. In my opinion, I don't know how you buy or sell comics without having some way to reference the value of those comics and the fact that they have this massive database. If you have a book, more than likely, you can find that book in the comicspriceguide.com database, and you can pull up your valuations to figure out what the comic is, how much it's worth, how much you suspend on it, how much you want to sell it for, whatever it happens to be. There is a link in the description. I encourage you guys to check them out. All right. Uh, let me see. I'm going to the chat real quick. Uh, again, we just had some winners of trivia. Uh, Doug, Dave, and my man, Seth, we're going to hook them up with some really awesome comics from my friends over at uh, Skybound. Let me go to the chat and see. I am way behind on the chat. Way behind. Wow. I uh, I will give you my secrets. Go to New Jersey. Me Brother, I live in North Carolina. I can't go to New Jersey for comics. Uh, Doug, Doug, Dave, here you go. Here is a tip for you. <laughs> they might be able to hit that one up. There you go. Frog Brawler, how you doing, brother? It is good to see you. Uh, let me see. I'm scrolling through some of the comments here. I will tell you, I do not have the patience for dollar bins. I do not have the patience to dig. Uh, I went to a, when I lived in Northern California, they had a 25 cent sale at the library. They had a, at the public library, 25 cent comic book sale. I went there and I, I dug, I was, I was, I was committed to that dig. I really was. I, I probably spent, uh, $5. <laughs> I think I think I spent less than five dollars. There were people that were walking out of there with long boxes. They were walking out with long boxes full of comics. Um, I, I'm just not that guy. <laughs> I'm not just I'm just I'm just not that guy. I I could not do it. Uh, thank you, Seth. Uh, Liger Styles up in here. Let me see. I'm scrolling through. Uh, let me see. Scrolling, scolding, scrolling. I may all be caught up. I mean, it it was bad in there. 
it was it was it was it was really really small it was jam packed and like i said i think at the time i was probably 200 i was probably 2 i was probably 215 I was probably 215 and looked like I was 230. Like I was, I was pretty big when I rolled up in there and I was like, man, you people are way too close to me right now. So I didn't, I didn't do too well, but I did enjoy that con. And like I said, I stuck with it enough to keep going back time and time again to the Berkeley comic show. So again, if you guys are in Northern California, I encourage you guys to, uh, to check them out. What is that comment there? Uh, I used to buy off a of comics price guy website. The downside was you usually don't get pictures of the book. That is true. That is true. It, it, none, none of these sites, none of these services are perfect. Um, there, there's complaints that you can make, but I do, I do like the pictures. Um, but I, I want to say you can get pictures now. I want to say that you can get pictures. Maybe you can't of the individual books that are for sale or had been sold, but I do believe you do get a photo of everything that you're looking for. So, uh, what is that? Uh, 25 cent cop, man, I, Steve, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm not built for that. I, I am not built for that kind of, <laughs> I'm just not, uh, let me see. Uh, let me just picked up. I, I don't know if I can read this comment with the two G's cause there's only one G in Reggie. I don't know if I can read that. Um, uh, congrats brother. I don't know. Congrats. <laughs> let me see. Let me scroll through. Uh, I was, Man, I was, I was, I was tipping scales. The largest I was ever was 236 pounds. I was 236. I had to sit down to put my socks on because I was, it was off season. Wasn't doing a whole lot of cardio. I would go up a flight of stairs and, um, uh, had to take deep breaths and then had to sit down to put my socks on. That's how bad it was. But, but man, I think that was, was that the year I turned pro? No, that was uh subsequent years, subsequent years after turning pro that, but I got big. I got big. My family had all kinds of nicknames for me back then. All right. So, uh, I want to give you guys an update on, um, something that we have been working on that specifically being, uh, the Kickstarter, the Kickstarter for isolation issue number three. Uh, we have brought in last time I checked $5,700. We brought in $5,700 for isolation issue number three. And I will tell you based upon estimates, we are, we are like at break even. We are basically at break even at that price because of what we pay the artist, uh, what it costs for production, what it costs for printing. And so I am very, very appreciative of every single person that has purchased the package. I am appreciative of every creator that has donated something for the project that has helped us to raise funds. Uh, the good news here is that we have raised some good money. The print file has been released to the printer and we should be moving forward with printing potentially early next week, which means that we should be on a good schedule for actually having the book in hand and shipped by the end of this month. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed that that magic gets made, but it looks really, really good right now. And it looks good because of every single person that's out there. Uh, if you purchased a package on reggiecollects.com that included a digital copy of isolation issue number three, I am hoping to send out digital copies tomorrow. We had to make a slight tweak to some wording in the issue. I'm waiting for the file to come back to me, but tomorrow I should be able to release that file. So if you purchased the package that included a digital copy, you should get that tomorrow. If you happen to be a Patreon member, if you are a Patreon member, you will also get a copy of isolation issue number three digitally for free membership people has its privileges. So shout out to the Patreon members for putting me in the position to be able to do this stuff. Uh, and so I want to give back to them. And so I appreciate every single person. Uh, there was a creator that is associated with isolation that was going to make a donation of some items for the Kickstarter. I, I believe uh, that she was ill at one point and, and delayed but today, today, something really awesome showed up from her, and I wanted to have her on the show to talk a little bit about it. Beth, welcome to the show. Thanks so much, Reggie. Thank you for having me. Beth, it is always good to talk to you because your accent is just fantastic. Thank I, you. 
<laughs> I, w- I wish that I had a cool accent, except, you know, I get a Detroit country accent. That is that is mine. It is not a wonderful English accent. But Beth, it is good to see you. Are you feeling better? Yeah, much better. Yeah, thank you. Um, I I just absolutely got rammed by some kind of head cold uh, and I was like in bed for about a week. Yeah. Um, so couldn't even crawl to my desk here to <laughs> do a bit of uh, <laughs> a bit of painting and things. But uh, yeah, I'm feeling much better now. Thank I'm, you. I'm glad to hear it. And and thank you for your for your donation. It showed up earlier today. I, I went to check the tracking number and it said delivered to mailbox. I was like, oh, let me go. Let me go get this. So I walked down. I get it. I open it up. And Beth, they are really, really cool. They are really cool. And and, and I want to show them here in a moment, but can you give a little bit of setup for what it is that you've donated that I'm about to show here momentarily? Let's talk about the first thing and then we'll talk about the second thing after. Right. Absolutely. So when um, when I was asked by yourself and Doug to create um, uh, that exclusive issue one uh, cover that I have here next to me as a visual aid. Um, (laughs) in order to create that kind of abstract thing that you see, I went through a massive brainstorm process. Um, I was talking to Doug and I asked him about, you know, who is Mandy? Uh, what is the journey that she's going on? What are the specific emotions tied in with her story and who she is as a person? Um, I wrote all that down. I have a, a, a couple sheets of spoilers that I won't share. Um, and, you know, I really, uh, sort of got attracted to the, to the words of like fixation and obsession and research. And, um, I made about 23 little tiny pencil sketches. Yeah. Did you really? I did. Yeah. Uh, in my little, uh, sketchbook, they're literally less than an inch big. Okay. Um, and out of those 23, I chose five poses that I really liked. Um, I sent those to Doug. Um, and in that sketchbook, they're the poses of, you know, Mandy's positioning on the cover. The final cover is very abstract. There's a lot going on. But in order to get to that, I needed to figure out what Mandy was going to look like, where she was going to be positioned on the book um, in a more simplified way. Um, So those five sketches uh, out of those 23 original doodles um, that I sent to Doug that we discussed, um, that we basically whittled down to that final image is what I sent to you. Um, So so basically the background to these are all the same, right? It is a, it is a, a purple background that is comprised of like newspaper clippings and headlines that you see. And then it's these wonderful, um, gold lines Mm. that are like connecting the dots, weaving the story, right? That's the background for every single one. And what you really worked on was tweaking Mandy's body position to bring that to life, the weight of her challenge to life. And I remember debating with Doug, like how she would feel, how she would be positioned as a result of what she was dealing with. So you basically took 23 thumbnails which mm-hmm. is a lot uh, that's a lot and you yep. whittled it down to, to five yes. you showed those to doug i think doug may have shown me three i think yes. i saw three and yep. i was like that's the one right yep. um but you sent you basically blew those out into individual sketches or paintings is that right yeah so they're mixed media um sketches so they're um they're on smaller uh sort of yeah these little cards Um, It's a combination of ink, uh, India ink, gouache. um, There's some watercolor in there. Uh, There's some water soluble graphite, which is a really cool um, thing that you can use. Um, And it's all put together to make these little um, sort of more detailed versions of what the final cover would have looked like. And and the final cover, in, in my opinion, when you see it in person, it's just fantastic. The photos don't do it justice. And the same can be said about these these small mixed media pieces that I'm showing right now. The, the camera doesn't quite pick them up as well as when you see them in person. You realize just how striking they are. Beth, is purple your favorite color? Because all of these are purple. You're wearing a purple shirt. I just want to be clear. Like... Yeah, yeah, um, it is actually. It's totally not. 
<laughs> on purpose. Sure. Um, but sure. I don't get to use purple very often. It's not yeah. the kind of color that you see in comics or, or in um, artwork a huge amount. So any chance I get to really showcase the the depth of color that purple can be, um, I love it. And I think it also works really, really well with Mandy's um, personality, her skin tone. And of course, those gold lines look fantastic on top of purple. The gold line, man, the gold lines are just really fantastic. So we basically took 23 thumbnails for yep. isolation issue number one, Comic-Con cover, right? We released mm -hmm. it at Comic-Cons, 23 thumbnails down to five. I saw three. We whittled it down to the final one, which was basically this one right here. Mm -hmm. But we now have the ability to pick up these original thumbnail sketches on ReggieCollects.com. But you didn't stop there, Beth. You didn't, you didn't just send me five really awesome uh, hand sketched, hand painted you said some other really fancy artistic words that I can't remember, but you, you didn't just stop there. You sent me something else. You sent bonus stuff. Talk yeah. about the bonus thing that you sent. And, and in your answer, hmm. I need you to tell me how big of a Scream fan you actually are. <laughs> so I always love receiving little bonus stuff when I get, you know, anything from an artist. And I had a really great opportunity uh, when sending you those five to send something that I would personally be really excited to receive as well. And I think if you're a fan of isolation, you're a fan of mystery, you're a fan of kind of thriller, maybe a little fan of the horror genre. Um, I think you're probably also aware of at least the Scream franchise, which is getting a new film coming out this month. Um, so I decided to include um, five limited edition prints of a little ghost face drawing that I did. And there it is. <laughs> That's yeah. cool. That's cool. And they're all number. How did you make this thing? How did you make this? Yeah. So I um, love working in pen and ink. And for Halloween this year, I did a few little drawings of my favorite horror characters, one of which was Ghostface. Um, and I was looking at that drawing a little while ago and I thought this would be a really great uh, thing to carve into linoleum. So I have these little, they're rubber blocks. These are linoleum. They're little squishy blocks. Okay. And you take basically a sharp object like this and you carve out the negative space and you're left with a pliable uh, stamp, basically. And then you take a rolly pin and you roll ink on top of that stamp you take your card and you uh you stamp it and you get those things i, I love creative people <laughs> how do you go from some foamy paper to this it, it's it it's really awesome i mean again i'm super thankful that i have an opportunity to work with creative people i could not have come up with this to be honest with you it, it is really well done and each one of these is numbered uh, one through five, and I've basically paired them up with one of these. And so you have an opportunity to get five in, or one of five, and then one of five, they come as a pair, but um, I'm also combining it with um, a digital copy of isolation issue number three. So people have the, the ability to go to reggiecollects.com and to make a purchase, you get two wonderful pieces and you get to, to read isolation issue number three digitally. Uh, Beth, I, I will tell you, I think that all four, no, all couple of them just sold. I saw something pop up over here. I think they may have sold, but I, I've got to check the site. Uh, I'm trying to pay attention to you first. But, <laughs> but Beth, these are awesome. These, these really are awesome. I'm glad you're feeling better. Thank you. Thank you for putting these together and sending Absolutely. them over. Thank you for supporting isolation. And for those that don't know, not only are you a talented artist, but you also do all of the lettering for isolation yeah. as yes. well, right? We forgot yeah. to mention that you've done the lettering for issues uh, one through three. Yep. You've done one cover, I think, right? Just one. I think I did two. I but did the issue one cover and then I did a one for issue two as well. You did. Both of them con exclusives. Both yes. of them are fantastic. You got my favorite color into the second one. You oh, did, did I? The, you did the red. <laughs> yeah, red. I was when I saw say. that, I was like, that's the one we're going. <laughs> but um, Beth, I'm looking forward, you know, to working with you in the future. Fingers crossed that we will have an issue four of isolation. You'll be able to work on that as well. Uh, but before I let you go, Beth, mm. to the point, you're a great artist, great letterer. 
are you working on anything special right now? Because I know you have a lot of projects. Are you working on anything right now? Yeah, I mean, I'm working on, you know, I'm working on commissions. I'm currently painting uh, two custom skateboard decks, which is really exciting. That's Another cool. totally different <laughs> thing from lettering and inking. Um, but hopefully I'll be able to post that on Instagram very soon. Um, and there's, a, you know, there's a couple of things happening in the works um, that I can't post about just yet. But fingers crossed, you'll start seeing some stuff coming. I mean, you know how it is behind the scenes. There's oh, six months of work before anyone can see anything. So, yeah, I am working on some some interesting and some more horror content as well uh, for those go. horror fans out there as well. So that'll be great creative people find a way to be creative and good creative people find a way to keep working. And I will tell you, my friend, uh, I have your name on another list for another project. That is also a secret project that I may be reaching out to you at some point. Uh, Beth, it is, it is always good to see you. Thank you for coming on and chatting with me a little bit about this. Good luck. And when you're able to talk about some of your secret stuff, not the skateboard stuff, but the other secret stuff, if I can be of assistance, you let me know and we'll have you come back on the show and talk a little bit more about those projects. Thank all right. You. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, Beth. Take care. You too. I had to ask her about the purple. She can't show up on the show with a purple shirt, giving me all kinds of purple stuff. And she can't, you know, you have to admit that purple is your favorite color. It has to come out. Uh, but I absolutely enjoy working with Beth. Uh, not only does she do, do the lettering, she does uh, some of the covers for us, but she also handles um, handing over the the final files to, to Scott to do the pre-press. So she is definitely a, an integral part of the team. I am very thankful to have all of these wonderful Cupert School graduates that I get a chance to work with that are super creative, much more so than I. Uh, but every single member of the team has contributed in some way, shape, or form to the success that we've had with isolation, but also with the success that we've had with the Kickstarter. And again, thanks to everyone out there. And like I said, I, I may have seen the sale of some of these uh, come up here on the screen. And if so, thank you to that person that is watching that just bought the stuff. And if you are interested in picking up uh, anything related to isolation, you can head over to ReggieCollects.com. We have issue one, issue two, for sale, immediate ship, and issue three pre-sale on the website right now. All right. Let me uh, go to the chat real quick to see. <laughs> there we go. I, I thought I, I saw a dollar amount pop up here on the screen. And I was like, that dollar amount looks to be the amount for the total. Uh, but I wasn't quite sure. But uh, again, uh, I remain humble by the the support that we continue to get from this project. And I will tell you, this is, this is not a cheap endeavor. It really is not a cheap endeavor at all. And so every single dollar that comes in is a dollar that is needed for us to continue making this magic happen. And so I'm very appreciative. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know what to do with that comment. <laughs> I don't know what to do with that. I will tell you that. Um, th you know, Tina, again, I, I have an ability to have people come on this show that really just deliver. And I think Beth could just come on here and just do ABCs and it sounds really great just because of the accent. But thankfully, she's an awesome person and um, she makes art sound awesome, you know, and I and I am thankful for that. Um, scrolling through some of the comments again, I think Trev was saying awesome. There you go. Uh, oh. Oh, forgot that one. I forgot to make mention of that. Uh, Doug, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, we'll, oh, wait a minute. So you and Delia will be doing the signing. I think Adam will be there for the signing. Is anyone else from Isolation going to be at the signing for Dewey's that is coming up, Doug? Uh, I will pause for your comments here. Uh, let me see. I will pause for that to see whether there's any uh, to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let me, let me do this. Uh, Delia, Adam and Beth, I think, oh, that's what's up. That's what's up, Doug. That is good news, man. If everybody's going to be able to make it, that is, that's awesome. All right. Um, I will tell you, I want to, to the point of this comment right here, 
I'm going to make two comments. First comment, we did have somebody reach out to us when issue before issue one came out asking to look at it because they, I guess, help find content for movies and TV shows and all that kind of stuff. So we were super excited that someone was even interested in having a conversation. Nothing came of it, but that's perfectly fine uh, because you never know. You never know what could happen down the road. But I've been watching a new show and I just finished it last night. And I immediately, when I saw the first episode, I sent a message to Doug and I said, Doug, you have to check out this show, Devil in Ohio. This is a Netflix limited series, I do believe. I don't think there's going to be any more seasons of this. But when you watch this show, in my mind, I could see how they could take isolation and turn it into a show for a streaming platform because they have the present day. And then they also have the flashbacks to previous periods and they kind of intertwine them. And it's a little bit of a, a, uh, a mystery, not really fantasy, but there is some elements of religion and cults kind of worked into the show Devil in Ohio, which is in my mind feels a lot like isolation. And so when I saw this, I was like, man, we just have to keep going, keep putting out good content that people enjoy as a comic. And maybe, just maybe, something will happen. Uh, <laughs> check it out, brother. Check it out. I, again, I watched it and I, I honestly did enjoy this show, Devil in Ohio. There wasn't much on TV. I saw this come up. I thought the woman in the back was pretty. So I was like, let's watch this. <laughs> that's how, that's how I judge shows. That's how I judge shows these days. Uh, and, and I went for it and I'm glad that I did because it was actually pretty darn good. It really was. So let me, um, let me touch on one last thing and then we're going to go ahead and wrap this thing up. So I saw this earlier today, uh, that Zachary Levi, Zachary Levi hints that he was almost star Lord in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy because he is friends with James Gunn. He said, you know, I've hung out with James Gunn. I've gone to a holiday party, that kind of stuff with him. Uh, I thought that that was interesting uh, that he was, he, I guess he, he he tried out for Guardians of the Galaxy. Ultimately, I guess that it did not work out for him to be Star-Lord, but I guess James Gunn actually helped him land the role of Shazam, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, and I was, I was re re reflecting back upon some comments that I made recently about the fact that I haven't seen a whole lot of activity for uh, Shazam Fury of the Gods, which I think comes out relatively soon. Yeah, I think it comes out relatively soon. I haven't seen a whole lot of publicity for this thing. And so I was curious how much money they had spent on this movie to make it. They basically spent $125 million to make Shazam Fury of the Gods. That is the second movie. Then I wanted to see how much they spent on the first one. They spent somewhere between 90 and $100 million on the first movie. That movie went on to gross $366 million. So even if they spent another... 100 million on advertising of Shazam 1, that movie still made a profit, which is probably how Shazam 2 was greenlit. They spent slightly more money for Shazam 2 than 1, probably because of the additional actors that were higher, because there's a couple of more stars in uh, Shazam Fury of the Gods, probably to absorb them. And maybe if they keep their costs sim similar for uh, promotion, Fingers crossed that they can also make a profit on this movie, which might be why we don't see as much advertising out there. And the truth of the matter is that it costs more to market Black Adam than it costs potentially to make Shazam 1 and Shazam 2. Just put that in context there. Think about that one for a moment. Uh just interesting numbers. All right. With that said, oh, action figure. I forgot you were here, brother. I should have, I should have just had you come on to, uh, to make some comments about this. What is that? Zach actually read for the adult Freddie Freeman, Adam Brody part, the producer and director were like, why isn't, <laughs> oh, check that out. Interesting. Um, I will tell you, um, Dave, he had on an outfit, uh, recently, it's like a, a mauve. It's like a mauve outfit. Uh, Zachary Levi cannot dress 
I will just go ahead and say that uh, it was the most atrocious outfit I've seen on a grown man in a very long time. I will just throw that out there. Uh, but I do like him as Shazam. He made some comments about hopefully Shazam still has a future in the DCU, even if he is not a part of it. He spoke very highly, of course, of James Gunn and the character of Shazam and hopes to see a future, whether he is part of it or not. I think a, a large part of whether we will she, see, see Shazam again will be driven by whether Shazam 2 actually makes money or not. There's a lot of people that did not like Shazam 1. I thought it was a cute movie. I enjoyed it. I really did. And fingers crossed that Shazam 2 is as enjoyable. Wasn't like a true adult movie, but it also wasn't a bad movie, certainly for kids. But with that said, we're going to wrap this thing up. I want to give a huge shout out to all of my guests that made it onto, um, made it onto the show tonight. Uh, fingers crossed that we can get our, our third guest back on the show at some point down the line when things uh, settle down just a little bit. If you guys need to reach out to me, feel free to do so on Instagram at Reggie Collects. Take care. My body ate itself until it found its passion. They got fat while we starved, but it's power and fasting. Until I turned to ashes, I remained stoic through my rap heroics. I painted 10,000 poems. Then I drank the potion of poetry and motion. I started choking, it was potent. My throat chakra downloaded. Knowledge. Just teasing. What is the name of the very first comic that I published through Swoger Publishing? Post that comment up. If you are the first person to post that comment up when this video goes up, you will get a stack of books from me. Second person that is able to tell me what is the current run of comics that I am working on at a 9.8. You too will be a winner. When the video gets posted up, make sure you post those comments up for a chance to win from me. My body ate itself until it found this passion. They got fat while we starved, but it's power and fasting. Until I turned to ashes, I remained stoic through my rap heroics. I painted 10,000 poems, then I drank the potion of poetry and motion. I started choking, it was potent. My throat chakra downloaded, knowledge hungry. I was embarrassed I could ask my parents for money when I had a full tummy. So I asked for wisdom, better than crypto, sweeter than honey. I don't take it for granted, I don't wear capes and masks.